lead, but of course Omega Esport have not given up just yet. They're going to fight it. It is a BO7 after all. There's still a lot of games to come potentially, and any one can still take the dub. Anyone can still take the championship and take the title of the best team in Asia as of right now. But anyways, a lot of sexy skins in this one. I'm going to be pretty happy. A lot of nice colors, especially with that with that corky. I got to say, I love it. I, I'm always looking for skins because Max, skin equals Maxi skill. dropping the high quality analysis yeah. here. Maxi dropping the high quality analysis. Just <laughs> how many good skins are in the game, boys? Um, you know, I, I think. Look, Max, this is going to be a, a lot of attention focused towards the bot lane this game. As you correctly mentioned, first Drake is often very important for Shivana. It is Infernal as the first Drake. That is probably the most important dragon for Shivana to pick up. It gives her the true damage to her flame breath when she's in dragon form. Um, so oh, it, it's going to be spicy. I genuinely favor the Omega comp at level five. You have a lot of really strong ultimates. You have Ragnarok. You have um, Unbreakable Will from Alistair. You have that, uh, that Ziggs. Uh, bomb, which is obviously going to be incredibly uh, powerful in terms of AoE damage. I feel like you're going to have to get some kind of mana advantage for next play, especially as Jinx is probably not going to be at her strongest state in the, fir the first dragon in the game. So I'm a little worried for, for next play because this first dragon will be so important. And again, we saw in the last game, it was a complete fiesta at the first dragon of the game. <laughs> We'll see how it goes. I mean, I think like the word Fiesta is just exactly what described that first game. It was a little bit of a weird one for Omega Esport. They had a hard time overall. But then we're going to go back to the composition of having Corky going into the mid lane. And talking about Corky, he just bullied Shirley on that Aurelion Soul. He's going to have to go for the Honey Fruit almost instantaneously. Reason why I also like Corky in this mid lane up against Aurelion Soul. Corky's got some really strong roaming potential. Um, so I think that overall having that against another good roaming potential character like an Aurelion Soul makes it a little bit even Steven in the entire game. So I think that they can both bring a lot to the jungle and also to the side lanes if they decide to do so. Algarin's going to try and get a little bit of deep vision, but it's not going to get done just yet. As Shivana though, doing her rotation nice and swiftly. She's just making her way around, trying to make sure she gets the information on this Dragon Pit when the Drake is about to spawn, which of course makes sense as you would focus down this Scuttler instead of the other one. Uh, rotation towards the top side. We're going to be seeing Olaf trying to take that fight towards the Garen, but unfortunately Garen a little bit prepared, just taking this one a little bit slow as Olaf will take his own skull up towards the Baron pit. Yeah, I think um, right now I'm, in, I'm anticipating a rather slow game. I don't think anybody going to take, I don't think any, either team is going to take massive chances uh, before we hit that first Drake fight of the game. You can see um, Shivana going for a little bit of counter jungling here, just taking away the Krugs, I believe, from the Olaf jungle, but Olaf will literally just mirror that top side of the map we basically got a vertical jungling opening up at this point in time um we didn't talk about it much but it is actually the corky mid ziggs bot which is something yeah. that is worth talking about um ziggs bot has been something that the the pc league variant saw played a pretty extensive amount um sort of like i don't know a few years ago and it was because of the ability for ziggs to just essentially out push almost any other ad carry in the game and he was able to essentially force down that first turret using his hex hex like explosive charge very very quickly which is, would allow the team to quickly rotate out of bot lane and start to focus global objectives and uh, we have the aurelian soul roaming down here though this is what aurelian soul could do Exactly. Nice headbutt coming on through. Does get stunned away on Polymorph, but at the end, it's just going to be a little bit of damage. But this is why I like to see from Trilly some nice roaming overall. But Alistar does pretty good. Can just bump him away from that Galet on that um, Celestial Expansion. So he's going to be able to hold on strongly to that lane, save up the Jinx and the Lulu some time as they're just going to go back to base. Because really, this lane has been heavily going in favor of this Ziggs and also Alistar combo. Alistar has been, you know, tanking it up as he should be and creating some good opportunities for this Ziggs to really dash out the damage. But so far, I've got to say, this is a very slow paced game, as you did mention scandal it was expected to happen so no one taking a lead just yet in terms of gold they're also really close just a 200 to 300 gold difference so far so nothing to get out there for the time being but drake is going to be on the menu for in the next now 30 seconds 35 seconds and that's where we can potentially start seeing some really early fights occur yeah i'm just waiting for back timings to occur as well you know you have that 30 second window now to go back for the first drake of the game you can see that the bot lane from uh, next play are now making that maneuver. I'm expecting um, Arise to essentially push this mid lane in and pick up his package at the four minute mark to make sure he has that available for this first dragon fight of the game. Again, you are seeing everybody coordinate their backs for this first dragon. A little, a little bit late from Chuli and Jushi because they aren't going to quite get there in time. But Aurelian Soul has picked up this. Um, uh, Leandri's Torment for this first right fight. You can see the package has now been picked up by Corky. You know it's about to go down, Maxi. It is going to be a fiesta at this first rate. 
Uh, headbutt, no, that's going to be our Scuttler. We're going to keep the vision down, which they had to contest anyways. They had to try and keep an information on it because they are not on the easy side access to the pit. Then to the mid lane, going to have a nice engage coming on through from also this Corky, trying to get the damage down to Chili, but Chili will be good to go. He will be able to escape. It was a very low HP. And because Chili's going back to base now, this might be an opportunity to try and go for an early Drake, but I don't think they're going to pull the trigger right here, right now. They're going to take things a little bit slow while Shivana wants to make sure that the wave doesn't get fully crashed and the CS is not lost fully for Chili to try and just make it back in the gold lead. But the wards once again coming on through and uh, Horizon trying to leash it up a little bit. But uh, not sure what he's trying to do here. Maybe just trying to abate a few players of uh, Mega Esport into the pit. Yeah, you can see now they're grouping up. I mean, they do this very quickly as a Shivana, and you can see Arisen has rotated down on this uh, this McGowan. Look, Maxi, I'm going to let you do, do the build up to this because there's clearly going to be some action. Oh, hell yeah, there's going to be an Edet taken away by the Olaf, not giving it to Shivana. No, no, no. And of course, now the fight comes on through. Great double knockup coming on through. Also, from this Alistar. That's going to create some great opportunities. And also, so many frags coming the way of this Olaf. He is busted, as I always like to say. And two kills coming his way out of the three frags. One of those kills actually going the way of this Corky. And now that's going to be mid turret potentially again taken down. And they have it too. They have this Ziggs, making it even easier to just take it down instantly. 20% HP. And that turret is gone, Scoundrel. What did we say, Maxi, at the start of the game? A, we're getting a level a level five Fiesta at the Bar a Dragon Pit, and B, we favoured Omega's team comp at level five. They have much more impactful ultimates. That Gragas ultimate was clean. That Gragas ultimate was <laughs> so good from JLC. Um, essentially, he was able to just knock Shivana away, prevent the smite from coming through, and they were able to secure it with the Olaf. No one got rid of the blast cone, by the way. So the blast cone was there for absolutely free for Olaf to just jump over the wall. Didn't even need to use his um, his um, uh, flash in that fight. Obviously, they just saw a kill go down onto the Garen on the bottom side of the map. They pick up the Gragas, but I mean, it's exa it played out exactly as we said, Maxi, it played out exactly as we said. Like that level five fight, it was much better for JLC. Um, and we knew that Shivana was going to want to contest the Infernal Drake, even though they maybe shouldn't have done so. But uh, it looks like we're getting a little bit back. It's a cross map play for a couple of turrets while the uh, Rift Terror is being spawned. Just again, we're going to see it on the screen now. The Blast Cone is there. You're going to want to watch this Gragas ultimate. Really lovely stuff. Beautiful. Look, it just knocks Shivana so far away. At this point, they are completely split. The Lulu has to flash over the wall just to even get it. She actually ulted that she wild growth herself. So wasn't even able to wild growth anyone relevant Ooh. in the fight. Uh, and they got cleaned up. Oh, Olaf trying to go for the dive actually with that Ragnarok. They're going to try and find the turret. Nice. You coming on through though, Chili. Doing some great work, and the ultimate from the Jinx almost, I thought, was going to be able to connect that kill onto Impressive Smart, but unfortunately, that is not going to be happening just yet. There's still that counter push coming on through. The turret is down on 39 HP, so at the end of the day, the team that really comes out on top of that one is going to be the side of Omega Smart. They almost find two turrets. I'm going to say they find two turrets. If the fight happens there, one basic attack and it's gone. So overall, good pickup and good counter push coming on through. Next play, unfortunately, now losing quite a bit there because also they are pushing down onto the bot lane. The objective game has dominantly been taken away by Omega Esports. It's really, really good stuff from um, Omega. They're actually rotating um, tame laps around so nicely. You know, this is what Ziggs is, is powerful at doing. Ziggs has that ability to just roam and take towers with relative ease. That top lane will go down to a single Ziggs satchel charge. If you're able to if you're able to get Ziggs safely into the red side jungle behind the Baron pit um, for Omega, they'll be able to just throw a satchel charge over the wall and pick up that tower for free. So, you know, this yeah. is what Ziggs is, is really, really good at. They're rotating him around the map. It's basically a walking turret destroying machine. And also, he scales up incredibly well, too. You know, he has a brilliant team fighter scaling, as does Corky. Right now, I, I, I don't see many ways for next play to get back into the game until we really have a super late game Jinx to talk about. And that's what I think next play are going to have to be playing towards in this game. They have to be looking to get Jinx up to three items at the very least. And there is some world where the Jinx Lulu combination can really start to pop up, pop off in the late game and essentially dominate these fights. But until that point, I'm a little worried. Right now, I think uh, Omega are in complete control. And with the next Drake spawning, the Ocean Drake, which is relatively important for Shivana too. It gives her the health in her dragon form. It was nerfed on the last patch or a couple of patches ago, but uh, it is still an important Drake for Shivana to be uh, in control of. I am expecting an, another Fiesta here. But if I was, if I were next play, I would be looking to cross map. I would be looking to go for the, the top turret. I know Shivana kind of sucks if you don't pick up the Drakes, Max, but I don't think they win these fights. I really don't think they win these fights. Yeah, I truly really agree with that one. And also, Shivana's going to get somewhat starved away from this game. They're currently at a full 5k uh, gold disadvantage. It's going to be going the way of 
the side of Omega Esports. So they're in a really good spot. Wow, uh, Alistar just chilling in the bush, in a river bush, trying to make sure he can maybe catch someone off guard paired up with this Ziggs. Things are going to get a little bit centered up. The entire team, here you go. You said it, the Fiesta is about to happen, and I think it is indeed. Everyone is going to start grouping towards that position, but the vision game is strong for NXP towards this pit. They have all the information, all the intel in the world that they might require. But are they ready to take this fight when... Really, when you look at the side of Omega Esport, they're pretty damn far ahead. It's still only 3-1. to one. It's not all that insane, but just their team fight potential is just absolutely through the roof. And they're just going to kick it off now, trying to contest it away. The fight is going to be roaring in just a few seconds. Down to 3,000 HP. Garen's going to go on deep. They're, they're trying to single out. That's going to be Shivana out of way. And unfortunately, can't fight it. They don't have the jungle, but Jinx just ults it down and secures the Drake. And that's going to make one happy Shivana for sure. And Olaf is down, unfortunately, went too deep in that fight. Now, the man advantage is going their way, but unfortunately, all the players on NXP are just so damn low. And Alistar's just diving the back line like he's a goddamn assassin. Can he find the kill onto Uzi? I think that's a yes. He's disrespecting NXP. And now they're just going to be chasing down the few remaining players in their own jungle, picking it up one by one. Sure, they lose the Drake, but they find the kills. Yeah, I, I mean, that's. I'd still say there's a pretty good result for an XP. You trade two for one and you pick up the Drake. At the end of the day, you're pretty happy with that because Shivana now actually has a Drake to her name. However, they should have just exited as soon as the, they, they picked up the, 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 the dragon there as well. You know, I think that was a, a situation where they, they felt a little bit more confident because they killed the Olaf. And I'm kind of seeing why the, um, the Garen's coming into play here because he has that execute potential. Because Olaf obviously gets stronger the lower HP he has. So the Garen comes in as an execute potential when he's trying to dive the, uh, the Jinx in the back line. So I like, the, I like the, the Garen pick in that regard. It's like a mini counter to the Olaf in the sense that if he goes low, you can just execute him with the ultimate. But I think they got a little bit overconfident because they picked that Olaf off very early onto the fight. But they, they they still were facing a huge number of ultimates like the Gragas Castle, the Ziggs Bomb. They were able to chunk them down and super low. But at the end of the day, Max, if I were next play and you offered me a two for one trade and we pick up the Drake, I would have taken that at the start of that fight every single time. It is a good result for next play because it's going to give that Shivana that extra little buff in the Dragon Form. Although there is now a group up around that Dragon Baron. Oh. Oh, I'm seeing Lulu here. She's just get oh, no way, Jose. That's gonna be it. Olaf picks it up and himself in a pretty good spot right now. Did pop the the Ragnarok, I do believe. So that's not gonna be available for the next fight. Unfortunately, maybe something NXP can try and use for themselves if they decide to do so. While well, Baron is indeed available, but mid lane is gonna be contested. They did lose their first turret earlier for next play, allowing a pretty big deep. Nice knockup can on on top of early on soul. But unfortunately, the team is not there. The follow up is not gonna be decent, so they will not get anything for the time being. But Baron now is still opened up. They got some decent damage on top of the early on soul. So maybe a way for them to get the Baron, but I'm not sure they're going to commit to it just yet. They're a little bit unsure if that should be the good call, and indeed, they shall not go for it. The other thing that you have to be worried about if you're next player is you actually can't out-trade Poke versus this comp. Like, the, the Corky and the Ziggs, the Poke between them, especially as the game progresses, is too difficult for you to navigate. You have to look for the hard engages, and that can also be a bit problematic versus, like, an Alistair and a Gragas. So, you're kind of in a, in a catch-22 where you can't play the ranged game versus the, the Omega composition, but you also can't really play the hard engage comp unless you're super far ahead, which, of course, at this stage in the game, they're not. They're 6,000 gold behind. So, this is just a worry, I think, for for next play. That you know, you can see they're being forced off their own turret, those single bombs doing about, you know, a sixth or a seventh of Jinx's HP in one go. They are just desperately looking to try and clear the waves as much as possible. But this is just you know, the Omega are playing this comp exactly the way they should be. Play it from range with the with the zigs and the, the corky poking as much as possible. And then when it comes to these team fight situations, you're also superior. It's a really nicely drafted comp from uh, from Omega overall. Yeah, they got the best of both worlds. Some really good poking range and then some good engage with that Gragas and especially with that Olaf that's been doing great so far in this game. They get a little bit split away when they did take that Drake fight, but at the end, it's A-OK. -okay. He's still in a really, really strong position as of right now. Though Drake is going to be spawning once again and is, as Excandor would like to say, uh, another guest that should be happening hopefully around that Dragon Pit. So that's going to be up very soon, I do believe. But everyone went back to base trying to get ready for the next potential fight, trying to get those itemizations on board. As Olaf trying to clear some deep vision, though he is Olaf, so if he has to escape, Ragnarok will easily <laughs> just snatches it away with a nice hatchet and will be able to get some extra 90 gold in his pocket. Red buff going to be contested. Can he steal? Oh my god, did he get that one? Yes, he did. He just snatched away he the did. red. He did. <laughs> wow. Literally oh. just uh, snuck it away. That's going to be important because red 
pretty impactful, especially if, if they were trying to donate that over to the Jinx. That's a pretty impactful buff to have in this next team fight, which is obviously going on towards the Cloud Drake. I don't know if next player are even going to bother contesting. They're not in the position. They don't have the vision. They've got zero eyes on their blue side jungle and even less in the river. They'd be walking into a trap versus an Alistair if they had to. So you can see next player just confident or, or rather just going to say, not even going to bother. There's no way that we get into this without, you know, potentially getting engaged on and just losing our lives. So they make the more sensible decision to give it up for free. But of course, this is exactly what Omega want. They are this far ahead where they've got complete dominance of the river, where at this point, next play can't even step up to, to, to look towards... Um, to look towards the dragons or look towards the barons and that's that's going to be a worry for them for them because the baron is quite clearly going to be the next objective being focused or even uh looked at by the omega <laughs> roster and then you need to step up like you need to get vision control you need to try and take control back of your red side jungle at the very least but at this point omega are in such a dominant position that they're able to just walk through for free steel camps put vision down and honestly next play i'm just essentially Dealing the scraps of waves and funneling them into Jinx. They realize Jinx is primarily their only win condition. Uh, and so they're just trying to give as many creeps over to Jinx as physically possible. Yeah, Hypercarry Jinx is going to be here for this game for sure. They do clear the vision away for the side of Omega Esport, making sure that they just going to put them in a little bit of a blanket of misinformation as, of course, you know, that's going to be Aurelian Soul can easily like just move away from that fight, not get caught up. But now as they are moving back into the mid lane, they're thinking, how can we potentially engage this fight? Well, Jinx does go back to base, so the man advantage is not there for fight does a call once again. Goes right into that barrel coming out from this Gragas. So just a little bit of extra damage down on top of the Shivana. Things after a little bit of a stalemate for the time being, but that's just because they are stalling. They're trying to take as much time as possible. Corky, though, be careful to not get caught out. You will be fine, especially when Olaf has went back into the jungle. They cannot afford to take this fight anymore as it would break out really badly. But next play, they have that fear factor. They're just not ready to take any fight whatsoever. They're just trying to take things a little bit slow, making sure if they can, like, especially as you said, Excan, funnel that gold into the Jinx. She's going to try and go in the hyper carry kind of position here. And try and get some good damage and try and use uh, especially that Lulu Jinx combo that we have yet to see really happen in a fight like that has just not been working out so far for them. And let's see if the next fight might be the one they've been wishing for. Yeah, I, mean, I think the game right now is kind of favoring them. Like they, they are just playing it slow, which is important because, right, you know, at this point in time, you need to. You don't want to give away anything stupid. The problem is you've got Elder Dragon spawning relatively soon and you're still not on a level playing field with Omega. And of course, the Baron is always under threat. So, you know, there will, there will be a point where. You can no longer ignore the river. You can no longer just sit back and farm under your towers. You're going to have to make a decision. But Jinx is now three items. You know, she is relatively strong. I'm also really loving the item that Arisen is going for here because I think it completely counters the majority of the damage. Although I have to say, the Baron has started here, Max, so we could see some action. Maybe it's still coming on through. They're going to try and smite it down, and it will be smited in debound by the Olaf. Unfortunately, Siobhan is sure she's got the GA, but she's taken a lot of the damage, having to force and flash away from that fight entirely. Well, the, man, this Alistar just keeps on diving. Good headbutt into the rest of his team. But oh, wait, wait. Oh, it still went down, unfortunately, to one of the bombs coming out from Zig. So that's going to be unfortunate. And truly just not able to have the impact possible. I hyped him up on this already on Soul, but unfortunately, he's just not given the cards and the opportunities to have the impact he's hoping for. And this is going to be two turrets going down into the mid lane. I mean, this could be almost game at this point, Max. Honestly, they've got the siege potential. Yeah. They've got the poke potential. I think it's game. I think so too, and you know what? They lose the Jinx, and that's even more going to be seeing the fate of NXP. Next play going to be losing this one. One to one, we knew it was going to be a hype series, ladies and gentlemen, and it is indeed one to one in this PO7. And uh, the further we go, the further I keep on thinking that we might just make it to a game seven here because dude, these two teams are just so damn good. Honestly, I would have preferred the Wukong here, Max, uh, over the, yes. the, the mm. Shivana. The problem with the Shivana, and uh, you know, and this is a discussion that me and Dave have had several.